please welcome Evan Evagora and Isa Brionis. Come on out, Isa. Hi, you guys, welcome to Chicago, first of all. Thank you so much for coming. Are you guys glad they're here? Hey. So, huge episode for you last night, which we'll talk about in a minute, and I hope you guys are up to date. Are you guys up to date? Did you watch last night? Good audience, good yeah. fandom here. Um, and speaking of fandom, I feel like Picard is not only such a huge legacy from the next generation, but also Star Trek in general. It, it's, it's just the most dedicated fandom. The be I, in a way, I said this earlier at the Walter panel, I feel like Star Trek invented fandom with the letter writing campaign. And so for you guys as actors, what is it like to come into a legacy like that? I mean, it's a it's a dream. I think as as an actor to already have an audience. I think that's always a worry with any project you do. You're like, oh god, I hope people watch this. But thankfully, Star Trek fans are so loyal that there is that built-in audience and that built-in uh, fervor for for something new and for so, uh, a new story to be told. And we get to be a part of that and bring something new. Yeah, I think you said it really well there. And like, I mean, Trek's gone on for so many years and there's so many different iterations. And every one of you that I've spoken to, you all have a different Trek that you love and a different captain and a different favorite episode. And it's just great that we get to continue that. And there's a new generation and an older generation that can come together and appreciate Star Trek again. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'm kind of curious. Well, I want, there's so many things I'm curious about, but did you guys grow up watching any track with Deep Space Nine or Voyager? Or TNG, TNG. TNG. Big TNG fan. Um, any Q fans out there? Yeah. <laughs> any fans of Tapestry? Course. Tapestry? Oh, that was a fan. <laughs> <laughs> so growing up watching the show and then meeting Sir Patrick. What was that like for you, Evan? Um, I was terrified, I think. Um, I was speaking to a gentleman before at the signing and he asked me what it was like meeting Patrick. And the first day on set, uh, I was terrified, you know, shaking. Then all of a sudden, Jean-Luc Picard comes walking through. <laughs> um, someone's speaking to him, of course, he's nodding very serious. And then they take him over towards me, introduce me to him. He says, hi, my name's Patrick. And I said, good, thanks. <laughs> and as soon as I said it, I'm like, all right, I'm fired. I might as well just like walk off the set. I've just embarrassed myself in front of um, Jean-Luc Picard. But he was really lovely after that and just kind of played it off as if it was nothing. And then we did the table read, nerves then again, and then actually having to work opposite him and then with uh, Jonathan Frakes directing as well, I, th I was sweating. <laughs> oh, I remember, like my outfit, as you've all seen, is like very... I don't know, like, a, there's a lot of layers to it, and it's very hot in the California sun, so that wouldn't, that wouldn't have helped either, but it was, <laughs> I guess, a dream come true. Uh, like, after the first day, it, every day became easier and better and more comfortable, I'm, I'm sure you would agree, Isa. Yeah, I mean, also, Patrick has the most... Uh, ease and grace to him that as soon as he meets anyone new he completely just welcomes you in and makes you feel like you've known him forever and that is truly what we all became very quickly into the process of making this we we all became a very close family and really it's all because of patrick yeah. Yeah. Now, the series obviously is cloaked in secrecy. <laughs> and so I, I imagine that started well before you were cast. When you were up for the roles, what did you know about the characters and what sides were you given? It, it, was there any context to anything? Do you want me to go first? Oh, right. mm -hmm. right. yeah. um, <laughs> so my process was a bit different to I know a lot of the other cast uh, members. They kind of found me in the final hour. So. When I got given the sides, it was, I think it was called Drawing Room, and my character was called K-Bar. Uh, Picard was called O'Toole in the, in the scenes. Oh, right. I was like, mm, yeah. what a weird name. Um, so I, I just got told that it was Patrick Stewart and that it was Picard, and I think I was set to take a plane the very next day. So I, you know, read through my lines, worked out everything as hard as I could, did the audition, then went on a plane to Fiji, and then I didn't find out I got it until like a week later. I was like, all right, that's it. I've kind of screwed up my attempt of being on one of, you know, uh, the shows like I watched growing up, so I'll leave it at that. And then I got a phone call, and <laughs> now I get to be part of Star Trek, which is really amazing. Okay, yeah, but I, uh, I was on tour with Hamilton when I first started auditioning. Woo! 
Woo, yeah, Woo. Hamilton. Woo. Yeah. Um, I was in Columbus, Ohio, and in my hotel room, yeah, Columbus. And, um, and uh, you know, the usual self-tape game, you put up a, a bed sheet over the door so you have some kind of white background behind you. Um, and I did about like, Ooh, maybe four or five self tapes, and then eventually flew to LA to to meet Patrick. But I didn't really know anything about my character. The uh, description said she is a young woman, and uh, <laughs> obviously, and a I lie. was like, well, I know how to play that. <laughs> but yeah, it, it very slowly then started to kind of piece together. I didn't know I was playing two people, spoiler, if you don't know, then you probably shouldn't be here. Um, but I didn't know I was like two people until my final audition, and they were just like, yeah, so it's about you know you and your twin, and I was like, what? <laughs> my, but uh, yeah, no. Well, you not only have that of playing the, the twins, but the characters are androids, but they don't know they're androids. Yeah. I mean, I think now, after last night's episode, you're starting to yeah. you know, figure things out a little bit. <laughs> um, but how do you approach, you know, how, when did you sort of, when was that part revealed to you, I guess we could say? Um, honestly, I didn't actually know who my father is until after I got the show. I think I may have read it, actually, in the script, and I was like, hmm, I think I might be kind of related to this guy. Um, but... I think I didn't, uh, yeah, they, they, it was a big um, discovery for all of us. I think um, the creative team and I, we both, we, all of us didn't really know what direction we wanted to take the character because there, there was like, okay, let's play it very much like Data or let's try it superhuman, like don't, don't even, you're not even thinking about being an android. And, the, and so that's what clued me into like, oh, maybe she doesn't know. And that's like when we kind of started to, get the full blown picture of of these these characters but now we finally get to see um Soji discovering who she is which is cool cuz i feel like Dodge you know went by so quickly you get to see that whole arc in like 45 minutes but now with Soji you get to really get into it over the, an arc of five six episodes now yeah well Dodge i mean even in the pilot that such a physical character with mm -hmm. so much fighting, and, and same with your character in the pilot. It, it, did you guys have to go through sort of extra fight training, stunt training? Like, how did that work? Yeah, I, I started training about a month before we started filming, and we have a great stunt team, and and um, and thankfully they, they taught me most of it, and, and I really got to do a lot of it, um, but we, um, an amazing, uh, my amazing stunt double, Kira O'Connor, she did a lot of the, uh, <laughs> more strenuous things, the, the, the flips and stuff, can't quite do that myself. Um, but we all got to work on that a lot and I think you, you did a lot of training too. Yeah, I did a lot of training um, with the sword. I think I wasn't even in LA for a day and I got a phone call asking if I could go down to the studio to meet my stunt double and I was you know, really excited and then all of a sudden he's throwing me a sword and he's like, see this, this is gonna be what you're using for the next like five months of filming, I think it was. So we just started working on sequences like for an hour and a half, two hours, you know, every two days, just trying to get, trying to make me look like I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, but he, all credit to Anis, actually Anis, did he, he, he killed Dodge in... Yeah, the guy who spits on Dodge, that, that's his stunt double. And yeah. that's, he also choreographed everything. He's also yeah, our choreographer. He, he's, he's really incredible. talented. Um, so anytime you see uh, Elnor doing, you know, crazy flips, uh, that's all him. I c cannot get that high <laughs> off the ground even if I try, yeah. Well, wait till a couple more seasons, then yeah, it will be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> stretch up a bit, you know, yeah. Um, Evan, what did, you said you watched TNG, so you must have known you know, a little bit about the Romulans, but what did you sort of do to prepare for the role and, and researching? I did get given uh, a list of episodes similar to what Star Trek released, you know, what you need to watch before Picard comes out. Uh, a lot more Romulan episodes than, than what's shown. But the thing is, I, I had this kind of preconception to what I knew about Romulans and then after it was, it wasn't until I got given my first copy of the script with my first episode in it, and I was kind of like, "Hang on a minute, this kid is raised completely differently." So I then had to start talking to like Michael Shaben about that, and then he he was very helpful to like point me in the right direction, the right people to speak to, to learn more about Romulan culture, stuff that we haven't 
previously known about. So that was pretty exciting. So I just kind of ended up having to approach it how I approach any character, you know, whether they're an alien or whether they're not. It's, you know, they're still a person with depth and, you know, character and opinion and, and differences. So that was really the approach that I went with. Well, and it's funny because you've kind of evolved into being sort of the comic relief of the show, you yeah, know, and yeah. I, it, it wasn't so present right away, but now it, you know, you're doing a great job with that. Did you know that that was sort of I, I did after the, the second episode. I think uh, Dr. Girardi says it the best. Does anyone think that absolute candor sounds really annoying? Mm -hmm. I think that was her line in, in, in my episode. And uh, he is funny, but I don't think, it, like, he doesn't realize how funny he doesn't he is. He doesn't realize he's funny. He, yeah. He, he, yeah, he just thinks he's the butt of every joke. And I think he says his truths and other people's truths, maybe not necessarily when he should, but it's definitely, when he says that people definitely need to hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Well, we want to open it up to questions because I know you guys um, are probably anxious to talk to Evan and Isa. Uh, while they're getting organized, everybody in here loves Star Trek. They love Picard. They love you guys. What do you guys geek out about? What are you watching? What are you reading? What are you into right now? Doesn't necessarily have to be entertainment. It could I mean, be. At the moment, I just finished Love is Blind on Netflix, <laughs> uh, embarrassingly, and Bojack Horseman. But I'd say, but yeah, Picard's probably the thing I'm watching at the moment because yeah. we haven't seen the episodes, so we're even though we've you know acted in them and, and done yeah. everything, it's just nice seeing it all come yeah, together. Yeah, every time you guys see a new episode, that's the first time we're seeing it too. We haven't watched; it, we saw the first three at the premiere, but now it's we're as excited as you guys are. And every done, time and we new acted in our that. parts and yeah. stuff, so yeah, we yeah, but it is nice. Do you guys have watch parties? We, don't, we, we haven't had one yet, but oh, we want to do one at the. We, we want to do one for the final, for the final, final episode. episode. Like the right one to really celebrate. Mm. You know, that's awesome. Hi. Um. Pretty much, I wanted to follow up on that whole. You saw they told you to watch all these Romulan episodes, but then this sect has been revealed yet. Mm. It's like with the Romulan supernova. It's like an ant hill's been kicked over. Like once upon a time, there was a queen, there was a hierarchy. This is exactly how everything is. There was a whole system, is. yeah. And everything that was being kept under wraps, like reunification and your like particular order, is like now all out in the open. Um, whereas this same question could apply to like both of your characters, mm. since you're representing a new culture with a new experience. How do you portray? My character has lived this all my life, but this, the audience is getting these slow reveals about how that works. How do you maintain a fictional cultural identity mm. like synthetic or, you know, Romulan when you're also relying on suspense and revelations to the audience that doesn't know the full story yet? I think for, for me, I have the advantage of discovering it along with the audience, which is awesome, because obviously Soji is, is figuring out who she truly is um, for the first time, just as the audience is. So I think we, what I love is that Soji and the audience have this special bond of both going through it together. You know, I, I, other people may know more about her, but she's discovering it along with everyone who's watching. Well, in terms of my character and my culture, um, well, my character's culture, sorry, I found a lot of similarities between Elnor and myself. He's a refu refugee. Both my parents are um, immigrants. So we're both from, or raised in countries that we're, we have no loyalty to, essentially. I mean, I call myself an Australian, but if you go back a generation, I'm either Cook Island Maori or Greek Cypriot. Um, he was raised in a sect of all female warrior nuns. I grew up in a crazy household filled with women who were trying to hurt me or dress me up in a wig <laughs> or anything like that. So the similarities were there. But I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just about finding those like commonalities and, and sticking stru true to the script. And we have amazing writers and amazing directors to help guide us through the entire process. So it's, I, it is on us as well, but I'd also say it's a credit to them too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, this is a question for both of you. Uh, so welcome to Chicago. We care about our hot dogs very seriously. Don't ever put ketchup on it. Um, <laughs> along those lines, thank you, thank you. Uh, I have a question. It's a good conversation starter, so that's why I'm asking you. Is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> why? 
I hear you are with the hard-hitting uh, questions <laughs> with the Picard I'm, panel. I don't know, guys. What do you think? So, if we think about the definition... <laughs> what, what do we call we, a sandwich? So, the definition of a sandwich, does, is, does there have to be bread? I think it's a shape, too, though. I'm going to look up the definition because of Because if there has to be bread, then it's like, okay, well, if you're having a hot dog on a bun, then that's that much. Does it have to be like the, a spread on the, on, the, on the bread to more, make a sandwich? But the shape is so unique. I, I don't know. I'm going to go with no. Cool. Um, just because I wouldn't... Oh, no, I'd put mustard in a sandwich. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't naturally go, hey, hand me that sandwich. If I was like, I want that hot dog, that would feel, I would just be like, I, I want a hot dog. I don't want that sandwich. I want a hot dog. And back home, we call like, um, hot, not every hot dog, but we call like, you know, hot dogs that you cook on the pan, sausage and bread. So mm. it's a sausage and bread to okay. me. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Fair. So there Thank you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that Heart very hitting question. Heart, Chicago. I'm surprised it wasn't about deep dish. So that's mm. probably later in line. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I said you threw out just very casually. Yeah, I was in Hamilton, and <laughs> <laughs> just like to talk about that for a minute here. Yeah. Can you share your experience? It's such an epic musical. It kind of I feel like defines our generation. Mm. Lin Manuel's so talented and so amazing. Tell me about your experience. Um, well. As, as you guys know, uh, Hamilton has been in Chicago for quite a while, just ended their run. So you guys have had Ooh. front row seats for a little bit, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a show that just changed my life. Um, I, I was a huge fan, obviously, like so many people before, before I started doing it. When it came out, I had just finished, or I was about to finish high school, and I was a musical theater major in high school, and I am obsessed with musical theater. My parents are both musical theater actors, and I was like, ugh, I, Eliza's my dream role. Probably won't do it in a million years, but like, it's my dream role. And then a couple years later, I was, able, I was hired as Peggy Mariah and understudied Eliza, and I got to tour around the country for a year and met so many lifelong friends and learned so much. It was because I, I didn't go to college, but it felt like tour was the perfect kind of education because it, it's kind of like college. You're 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 in these hotel rooms, kind of dorm room ish, and you're with the same people all the time. You're traveling with this family, and and you have like a set routine of what you're doing every day. You're doing the show every day, and and it was the perfect education and felt like everything I learned from that was the perfect way to enter into doing a show like this, which, because Hamilton has such a wonderful fan base, and now to go to Star Trek, which is that times a thousand, is, is really, really special. That's amazing. Well, congratulations. That's a Thank you. great two projects to start your career with. Yeah. <laughs> not, not just shabby. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi, thank you so much to both of you for being here. It's a thrill to see you guys here, and I've been really loving Picard. Um, I do have a question about Elnor. Um, in last night's episode, we left him kind of in a precarious position, let's <laughs> put it that way. So I was hoping you might have some words of comfort about that and maybe could just <laughs> hint a little bit at what his arc might look That's like. That's code for spoilers. <laughs> yeah, yeah pretty, pretty much. It is, it is code for spoilers. Um, <laughs> I have no shame. <laughs> what can you say, Evan? I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know what I can say without getting in trouble. Um, apart from wait and see, that's, that's all I can really... Uh, don't, don't be worried. Hey, but you guys got to see our first scene together where we don't, don't talk, talk to each other. We look at each other, <laughs> in the same room. What a stare. You, you say my name, and I'm not looking at I you. Know, I'm I just know. like, uh. <laughs> But, you know, special bonds were made that day. Think, yeah, did we realize that was our first scene on the day? I think we're like, we haven't shot together because yet. Because we, we all got close at San Diego Comic-Con, I think was the first time the whole cast was really together. And so we felt like we'd been working together for a while, but then we were on set and we were like, Hang on. I don't think I've yeah. seen you before. <laughs> but, uh, but hey, now, now, now we're besties. And the question is, do we ever meet again now? Because we don't know. That's the oh. question. Oh. Well, that's Thank the you. Question. Sorry to put you on the spot like that. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Great question. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm a big fan. And uh, one of my favorite things is uh, collecting figures and things. 
Do you, are there any action figures in the works for both your characters, or is that something that you'd be interested in? Well, I did the poses for it. We, we, yeah, we, we did the poses, right. Yeah. So I hope they'll be coming out soon. Yeah, the way that they do it, like they take pictures of you and like, and they make you turn a little bit and, and so they can get the whole view of your body, but um, we haven't seen them yet. But I'm very excited about it. That's the thing I'm looking forward to the most. I wasn't even yeah. looking forward to the show. Yeah. I'm like, whatever, where's my toy? <laughs> whatever, uh, I can do a show or whatever, but I want to hold myself in my hand. <laughs> now. I'll not say the joke that I usually have said about action figures and holding them yourself. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, but uh, isn't that kind of like, it's definitely one thing that every actor aspires to, whether you're a comedian or a serious actor, is getting that action figure, mm -hmm. I think. So yeah. that'd be pretty cool. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm really jealous that you get to touch Harry Treadway's hair sometimes. <laughs> um, so can you talk briefly just working with him and those scenes you have, or how is it like to work with yeah, Harry and Daryl? Yeah, for a while, um, as you can see, like our, a lot of the story, the storylines are so separated. Um, you know, the La Serena crew is off on their mission, and, and I'm very much kind of in the dark really in the dark the board keep is very dark um <laughs> so um yeah harry was kind of the only person i was working with for a while harry and uh, jonathan del arco we kind of had our own little little crew over there um and that was that was awesome kind of establishing that that um that kind of that vibe of the of the board cube feels very different from from what's happening on the La Serena. So it's cool to have established that, and we got to work together a lot at making that. And, and also the set is amazing for the board cube. Probably my favorite, one of my favorite sets to be on because they, they just really make you feel like you're in in this place that you shouldn't be because it's so eerie. The 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 lights and the smoke and everything. It, it's really great. Um, but yeah, Harry and I had a lot of fun uh, working in bed most of the time. We we're often under sheets, as you can see in these scenes. Um, but yeah, and then we'll hopefully see who else Soji gets to interact with, because now uh, he uh, kind of screwed her over, so we'll see. Um, is, is he like funny or super serious all the time? Who, him? Yeah, Harry. Oh, oh, you should see the two of them together. Oh my god. No, oh, it's a mess. It's a mess. It is. It is. No, but um, I well the whole cast we're all a pretty uh, funny group of people, I gotta say. <laughs> Bunch of jokesters. <laughs> But that's why I think it translates. You can always tell when a cast gets along and enjoys being together when you watch the show and it just feels like you're on this ride, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, so who asked the hot dog question? Where'd you go? Oh. Okay, so I, I took me all this time, but I pulled up the definition of a sandwich. Webster. This is Miriam Webster, okay? <laughs> definition of a sandwich. Two or more slices of bread or a split roll having a filling in between. Huh. Or one slice of bread covered with food as an open face sandwich. Oh. Uh, or the second definition is something resembling a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so based on those very extensive Merriam-Webster interpretation, what is a hot dog? <laughs> Well, then I guess it must be a sandwich if that's the definition. It's I just, not my go-to sandwich. It's not my go-to. Like yeah. I think a hot dog is a hot dog, in my opinion. Why is it even called a hot dog? Like, isn't it beef or... I don't get no, it's no offense. We don't ask what's in a hot dog, Evan. We don't ask. You don't want the to know. first rule of Fight Club. <laughs> don't ask. Rookie mistake. Um, okay, hi. Hi, my name's Brian. Hi. Uh, my question is, what's been the biggest mental change shocker thought process of entering the Star Trek mythos with, well, all these people? <laughs> shocker. What's been the big like shock? Well, mental, whatever, mental thought, something that's kicked you in the head, like, oh, I'm now part of this, or hey, oh shoot, now I have to deal with this. Well, I'd say, oh, you beautiful people. I mean, when we yeah. came out in San Diego and we were just welcomed by a sea of amazing Trekkies screaming our name. Before anyone before even anyone knew us. Knew us and <laughs> yeah. before any of you had seen our trailer, I'd say that's when, that's when things really changed for me just mentally, because you're at work and the, the focus is the job and just getting your character yeah. right and working well in order to make sure that we're doing something special and something worth doing. And then, yeah, I'd say that was the change. What, what about you? Yeah, well, 
I think we're all aware that Star Trek has an amazing fan base, but I think once once you're in it, you get a whole other view of it. How I feel like there are so many people I've talked to who really make it clear how important Star Trek has been to them in growing up and coming into who they are as people. And that's really touching, because um, I feel like I've talked to so many people that have said uh, Star Trek was their family when maybe they didn't have a family to to rely on or they felt different they felt other and this star trek was was their home and that is so special that we now get to be part of that family and i feel like that's been the overarching theme of 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 being a part of this is just family yeah absolutely yeah thank you thank you Hi. Hi. Uh, first of all, you two are both uh, so gorgeous and talented. Wow. Well, thank, <laughs> thank you for being you. here. Um, thank you. My question is, uh, we touched on it earlier, uh, one of your first questions, but uh, as far as like research goes, um, not just with the Romulans and with your relationship to Data, um, but what about the other characters and everything? Did you watch Voyager for Seven of Nine and the Borg? Um, and we know Guinan's coming in on season two. Uh, how deep did your research go with like the other characters, not just with Picard, but some of those other uh, famous fan favorites? Well, with their history, it, you have to think of how it's relevant to your character's history and your character's understanding and their point in their story of Picard. So, I mean, I already knew who Seven of Nine was, obviously, and I've lost my mind when I found out that she was <laughs> gonna be in the show. I called my mom. <laughs> I, we weren't allowed to tell anyone. I called mum straight away. Yeah. I was like, you have no idea who's gonna be on my episode. And she's like, who's gonna be in there? And then I was like, Seven of Nine. She's like, no way, no way, you're lying. She thought I was lying the entire time until she actually appeared. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just about, um, understanding your character's world and your character's history and the history that they would have been educated in in the world. So our characters may have heard of Seven of Nine or have some idea about it, but mm -hmm. that was the first time my characters ever met her. So that's all I can go off, off of those experiences and interactions between one another. Yeah, I tried not to, not to do too much research because uh, one, I feel like I would have been too nervous to talk to anyone if I like really became a c huge fan of, of someone. I'd be like too nervous to film with them. But also, yeah, so Soji is doesn't know anything about what's going on. I mean, she's very much discovering everything as she goes. So I kind of tried to mirror that in the work that I did behind the scenes. I, as I met new people, new characters, that's when I would really start to like look them up and, and try to get a, a bigger picture. But it, you, you try to go at it from the perspective of your character to be as truthful as possible. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I can't help but notice your bracelets. Yeah. Were those gifts today? Um, no, actually, my friend, uh, for my birthday, she made these bracelets that say Dodge and Soji. Aren't those awesome? And I also have a ring version of my necklace as well, because I, I don't wear a lot of necklaces, but I wear rings all the time. So uh, the woman uh, who designed the necklace, Allison from Rock Love Jewelry, um, I communicated with her, and, and we worked out a design and, and came up with this. And and I love it. I wear it all the time. I love it. That's <laughs> awesome. Hi. Hi. Uh, I've got a bit of a boring technical question. Um, older Star Trek had a lot more like isolated episodes by themselves, and something like this is obviously much more of a long story tied together. So from your guys' perspective, do you have to shoot one episode, everything in episode one, before moving on to episode two, or do you have to consolidate like sets and locations and mix and match between them? The, the, we, we did a, a block shooting, so we had to do two episodes at a time, and, um, and one of our blocks, actually, we had to film an episode, an episode ahead. ahead of, so we, we had a whole episode missing and we hadn't even read the episode in the middle, so we were we a had little, no idea we were what little was scared. We were like, what's going to happen? Um, but It worked out. But yeah, but I think the way that they, uh, they make it work is we have such great people behind the scenes making sure that we are as informed as possible so that we can make the story make sense. Because I think to anyone 
sometimes these storylines can be so complicated that anyone watching can be like, wait, what, what happened? Did I miss something? So uh, even as you're reading it and with huge chunks of information missing, it can be hard to piece it all together, but we have incredible writers and uh, incredible people running the show that made it as seamless as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, one thing with Picard is it's definitely, I mean, if we, it's definitely the darker, the darkest trek that's been out there. And even, you know, with the cursing and things like that, have yeah. you guys had any feedback from the general public about the tonality of the show? Yes. There's, there's been... Uh... I mean, that's the best, I will say, the best thing about all Trek fans is everyone's got an opinion, but you all love to debate, but you're never, mm -hmm. like, harsh on each other mm -hmm. when you debate, you know what I mean? It's always, like comes from, well, from what I've read online, anyway, and, I, and I'm on a, on a lot of the fan pages, just so you know, just different names <laughs> so you'll never find me. Um, <laughs> don't even bother. Uh, it's, it's, the debate is just always, I don't know, there's either always people backing up one person, backing up, but yeah. it's, there's never any malice behind it, and I think the more, the more discussion about our show, regardless of whether it's about tonality, storytelling, whether someone likes something or someone doesn't, as long as it's creating a discussion, I'm happy. You're brave to go on the fan pages. I know. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm, I'm there for the memes, though, to be honest. I love the memes. <laughs> Hi. How you doing? So, Trek's history is filled of epic one-lines, such as, mm -hmm. beam me up, uh, she can't take anymore, mm -hmm. uh, engage, and even as recently as Black Alert. And they all mean something to the stories. Do you think your line, please choose to live, can make that list? Um, I'm going to answer that yes. <laughs> Anytime, okay, I don't know who's seen the last, the latest episode, but when the thing goes up and goes to black and he's just saying, please, friend, choose to live, Even I, I screamed. screamed. Even I screamed. I was like, oh, yes. Because we, that was um, added, so we added that into the ad, like an ADR. Yeah. So I was the only one who knew that I was going to say that when that came up and I was so excited for it to happen. Cool. Yeah. So cool. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> have, have you seen any Picard memes or like gifts come out yet? I really haven't seen any. I make memes on my. Yeah. We both do yeah. we make Picard <laughs> all the time. <laughs> We're like competing to see who can make a better meme out of it. It's them. like a competition. But, but Star Trek, they actually they send us uh, gifs that they've made, so we actually have them ready. But I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm trying to seek out new ones to make some some some, fresh some more. Memes. Yeah. <laughs> Again, a sign of, of success and stardom in today's world, a meme and a gift. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Okay, one of the things that I've always loved about Star Trek is the world building, how deep it goes into the different cultures and the different places. So my question to both of you is, which place would you and your character go to if you could? Any time, any series, any place, which would you go to? I think my character would go to Romulus. I think that people, if I had to choose any characters to me, would probably be my parents. So if I had to like, choose selfish reasons, that'd probably be where Eleanor would like to go. Um, just because even though he views Patrick, or sorry, Picard as a father figure, I always go and say Patrick, so I'm going to say sorry now. Um, the same. It's still not, it's still not his blood. And we don't, well, you all don't know 100% his history yet. So it, I, I would like to, if I could go anywhere, to be Romulus and to be with Elmo's parents. Mm. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like that would be true for for Soji as well. I think now that she's starting to discover who she is, um, that is her new mission. I think we all want a purpose. I think all of us in this world want a purpose, and and for a while, her purpose was to be on the Borg Cube and, and helping these these XBs find new meaning of life. And now all of that has, has changed and all of that has been kind of ripped from her. So finding a new purpose is, is kind of the new goal. And I feel like she would want to, to find her people, find her home planet, find whoever she can to make some sort of connection to who she is to find that new, new purpose of life. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. I, I'm, I really love the show. Uh, Picard is my favorite captain, and Data is my favorite character. So when I found out that you're his daughter, mm -hmm. that was great. I'm actually a Data cosplayer, but I wasn't able to do it today. But I will tomorrow. Yes. Um, <laughs> but I was curious about you know you touched on playing t twins, mm -hmm. and um, it, it's they they seem to like you and and uh, 
I guess the hair and makeup team succeeded at, at making them look like two very distinct characters. Mm -hmm. I was wondering about the process for that. I mean, sadly, we didn't get to see that much of Dodge, but uh, yeah, I, I'm wondering like how you did that. That's yeah, a great I, question. I, I think, um, yeah, that it, it's hard to answer that when really we only saw a little bit of Dodge, so it, it's kind of easier to, to find a difference since you've really only seen one person for a short amount of time. Um, but for me, it was, it was like, well, there doesn't need to be a, a huge difference because if you look at any two sisters, they're probably alike in some ways and not alike in others. Um, and yeah, the, the makeup, it, it's funny, there's only so much you can do, and so I, I always laugh at the fact that it's like, okay, Dodge parts her hair to this side, <laughs> and Soji uh, parts her hair to this side. Um, but it kind of, it actually works, especially because they're in such different places. Um, Dodge was on Earth, and, and it, I feel like you see very warm colors around her when you see her, because she's in the vineyard, she's she's in her her green um, her green cloak. But when you see Soji, it's it's very cold. It's the Borg cube. It's it's not as welcoming. It's a little harder and edgier. So those. At the atmosphere, the hair and makeup all really just helped, and that in turn just brings out your own character differences because once you're in costume in the world, it naturally comes out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. I can definitely see you uh, cosplaying that. Yes. Yeah. I would love that. Have. Oh my God. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Find me. <laughs> how how far in advance do you guys get the scripts? I mean, I, I know you were block shooting two episodes at a time. Would you get them, you know, 48 hours before, or you know, how? I think a week before. How much ahead? A full proper draft. In the beginning, we we had a little more time with them um, because those were, uh, I think, the first few episodes were were fully set in stone um, to start with, but. You know, with any show, as time goes on, things things start to change. Things it get a little more hectic. Um, so it, it, we we got less and less time with the scripts, um, especially in the last last uh, that couple well, weeks. Yeah. It, it was it was definitely like you wake up and there's a new scene that you're shooting that day. So yeah, it it kind of keeps you on your toes. Um, but but by by that time, they had already established such a great world that we were in and such a compelling story already that it felt a little bit easier. To kind of roll you know your whatever character came. so well too. Yeah, by that you've point, lived your character, so you know easier. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hi. Hi. You look great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, hard hitting, difficult question. Uh, two things first, actually. Um, Star Trek shit posting on Facebook is a rich source of memes if you're looking for I'm on them. it. Yeah. <laughs> He's on there oh. every day. <laughs> Everybody in that group freaked out when they realized that Aaron Eisenberg was in the group, so. Uh, I won't say anything, but I'm sure other people here are in it, too. So, uh, awesome. Good luck finding me, honestly. <laughs> Fair. Uh, Hard-hitting question. What's your favorite pizza topping? Pizza topping? Chicago, come on. I'm going to say cheese, just because it's oh, safe. No, olives. Black olives. Ooh, black olives. Black olives. Controversial choice. I like it. You know, I'm going to be boring and say I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm a cheese pizza lady. I like just cheese pizza. I like, I like the occasional... Basil? Basil? No? Ooh, ooh. You know, I like, I like kind of a, I, I like a, like a, a, a basil ricotta situation. Ooh, that can, like, I go real bougie yeah. with my pizza. Yeah. That can be fun. That's up there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Here, you. Here's the real question. Does pineapple belong on pizza? No. Oh, the age old debate. No. Absolutely. The age old debate. I don't want to get myself in trouble. I don't even want to answer them. You don't want to pick a side. I don't want to pick a side. People are going to turn against no, me. No, doesn't belong on pizza. <laughs> Pineapple's delicious, but... Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so if you guys could pick a character in the last century, any, any uh, non-fictional character, and you could, you know, aside from budget and, and time constraints, you could have a project built around that character and play the lead. Do you have anyone in mind who that would be? Non-fictional? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, non-fictional? My mind was going through like... Yeah, I was thinking of fiction. Non-fictional. You can think on it for a minute. We'll come back. I don't know. In the last century? Well, it could be real. I mean, you can play anyone. Why? Yeah, any, any historical figure. I think it'd be cool to play Prince. 
I think I'm too tall, but... <laughs> Prince is amazing. Wouldn't mind wearing those high heels and having a bit of a boogie and... Yeah. <laughs> Prince is great. Okay, this, this isn't... Uh, this is a weird answer. It's kind of a deep cut, um, but it's just because it's something I've actually been writing for a while. Um, is, do you know Evelyn Nesbitt? Anyone know who she is? Yeah, um, she's a, she's a character from she. Well, she's in a lot of pieces of of, of art, but she's actually a, a, a real person from the turn of the century, and uh, she's just a very interesting character. And I've always thought there should be a movie about her because no one really talks about her seriously. They kind of make her the butt of of jokes, just being this ditzy girl who would pose for pictures um, for money, but she was actually a very interesting character, and I feel like that's a story of a strong woman that should be told, and I would love to do that. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. So I would look her up. That. Yeah, she's very interesting. She died on my birthday. Oh. That's a fun fact. I mean, a sad fact, but a fun fact. Hey. <laughs> Hi. I, She's back. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to ask about hot dogs. Serious <laughs> about Star Trek. Um, Evan, I really enjoy learning about the Kuat Milat in the way of absolute candor. But as an actor, I can imagine it's probably difficult in that like your character, their heart is pretty much on their sleeve. Um, did you find challenges working with that aspect um, as far as like finding motivation or reacting off of everyone else who is clearly hiding things? I, I think the hardest thing was um, delivering those lines and not making them sound cheesy or like if it like because in the script you can tell like a lot of the moments are, moments are meant to be comedic and the hardest thing to do was to try and not be funny if that makes sense like if, if I tried to make it funny it just wouldn't work. So I think that was the biggest thing I had to kind of think about. And the only way I could think about it is, is like I just play it straight. I play him straight and whatever he's saying is he thinks it's serious, even if it sounds ridiculous. Like the hardest thing about, I don't know if you've all seen last, last episode, but the hardest thing, I even remember calling like my girlfriend up from uh, Australia and my mum and my sister, because I was having some, I was like, how the hell do I make our butt the word out but and in butting. I'm like, how the hell do I make it seem like he thinks those are genuine real words? <laughs> I'm like, that makes no sense. So I just, I'm talking like a solid week of pure panic, just being like, this isn't gonna work. But this is. in but out but yeah. in but. But out straight. in but out but. Yeah, it just got so confused. And then yeah, so it's just like he needs to be played straight. He need like his truths are serious, even if they are funny. He, that's just you know, that's just how he views the world. And I think that it kind of adds to it, and it kind of adds to a bit of his naivety and, and the humor. So yeah, that would have been the biggest challenge, I'd say. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, one of my favorite critics has defined being a nerd as being able to turn fun back into work. <laughs> and Star Trek has like done that. Like there's more Klingon speakers on the planet than Navajo speakers. Um, <laughs> The philosophies of like Vulcan have been like put into a book, like all the rules of uh, acquisition, old Klingon sayings. Like, how much are they building this like philosophy of uh, complete candor? Um, or is this just as it comes and then it'll happen to be whatever it happens to be? Or did they go, here are these principles and even if we're not writing this in a scene, don't like do this because that would be outside of your character. I think it's a bit of both. I think they write it in a way and they understand the character. It, to begin with, it's like any job. The writer will know more than you about everything, even about your character. If I, I've, I, I got the job off two pages of a script, so the person writing that script and writing the series it was way much more about my character, but by the end of the season, I've lived in that character's shoes, I've had to think as that character, I've had to act as that character. It becomes a bit more, more even, so there were points where I was like, I just don't think he'd say that, or he'd say it like that, or he'd approach something like that. And Actually, it's a credit to Akiva, Akiva Goldsman, because he was, um, actually, I'm not going to reveal anything, he was something, something on the set that day. Yeah. Um, and 
and it was just really handy having him there because you get you wouldn't have to go through all these like levels of bureaucracy and waiting. You wouldn't be waiting for 20 minutes to get an okay for to say something in a line. He turns you and be like, mm, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so there is that kind of collaboration eventually, but to begin with, it's very much this is your character. These are the rules his religion, creed, sect, whatever you want to call it, follow. These are the things you need to obey. And then you also got to remember that he's now left that. So how he, the things he's learning, the things he's like trying to understand now will change him ultimately as they change anyone. You know, I've, I'm a different person than, than the person that flew out to, from Australia to LA to start his first, you know, big job on, on Star Trek. I'm, I'm a very different person and Eleanor is a very different person to the person that we found at the start of, the, of episode four. Thank you. Thank you. Out of all your projects, not just Picard, but any, every, everything you guys have done to date, what has been the most difficult scene that you've had to film and why? Or it could be on stage. Outside of Picard. It, no, it can be both. Oh, oh. Anything. But if you... You go. So the last movie I did was Fantasy Islands, currently out in cinemas, go watch it. Um, <laughs> cheeky little plug. Um, <laughs> yeah, very subtle. Um, so I was in makeup. Uh, I was in full to head to toe prosthetics burn makeup and it took about four hours in the makeup chair to do it. And I'd say that was probably the most challenging thing in my life because we did it in Fiji. That sounds nice, but it's really boiling hot. Um, and I had like packs of ice in my suit and it was just constantly sweating. And I think the longest day of me, and I'm not talking about me starting in the makeup chair, I'm talking about me being fully in the prosthetics to me being cut out, I think it was like 23 hours in prosthetics. So that was probably the most like difficult day of my life. And I flew home the next day too. So oh, I found oh. out I got Star Trek two days prior and I was like, man, the prosthetics better not be like this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and they weren't. So I was very lucky, but that was probably like the biggest, the biggest challenge for me and being able to act and show like any facial movement or recognition whatsoever without tearing my skin or the glue off was a bit of a challenge. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm I'm gonna have to say um, the first scene um, where I meet Picard was probably one of the hardest scenes I've ever had to do, um, just because um, mentally that was that was my first day filming, and um, I was so nervous um, working across Patrick Stewart and and also having to basically be screaming at Patrick Stewart is also really scary. Um, and, and yeah, it was, it was one of those, those, those moments where I, didn't, I still didn't know a lot about my character. There was a lot that was in the dark for me and, and trying to, to hold your ground opposite such a legend, it, it can be really nerve wracking when you, when you feel like you don't know everything. Um, but that's the beauty of it as well, is the fact that I, I felt like I didn't know anything and, 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 that, and that's so scary when you feel like you're with someone who knows everything. Um, but in the end, he was so amazing at making sure that I felt comfortable and make, also telling me like, hey, I don't know what I'm doing either. And he's like, at, at, at 79 years old, you're still learning, you're still figuring it out, and you're still as nervous, you're still as, 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 as eager to learn. Um, and that really made me feel so much better, just having him there. And there, there was a moment where I, we, we had been trying all these different takes because I think all of us were trying to figure out exactly where Dodge was in this moment, um, trying to figure out how activated she was, how, how scared she was. How, and so we were all figuring it out. And we finally got to this one take where we were all like, okay, this is, this is the one, this is the one. And then an airplane starts flying overhead. Oh. So we had to hold. And I'm like there shaking and crying. And that's at the point where, where um, Picard grabs Dodge, Dodge's hand, and he had my hand, and they said, hold. And I was like, oh, god damn it. And I'm just like <laughs> standing there, but he, he just kept holding my hand and kept just looking right in my eyes and, and for like 45 seconds waiting for this plane to pass, and it just made me feel so much better. And that's just the kind of person he is. Mm -hmm. 
That is such a beautiful, beautiful story. Mm. That's amazing. What, there's so many people who would love to be in your position um, as actors and, and who want to be in the business. What advice do you have for someone who would like to pursue a career in acting? Um, I'd say no one's path is the same. So if you're looking at anyone's career being like, okay, I want to emulate that or, okay, this is obviously like the process of getting into like film and television, I can guarantee you it's not. Everyone's journey is different. I also would say don't compare yourselves to anyone because that's ultimately what will get you a job, your uniqueness and the things that make you you. Um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I mean, that's really what I have to say as well. I, I feel like you're often, you are comparing yourself to other people's highlights of their life. Like what you see on social media and what you see in their, um, in the movies that they've done, you're seeing the best parts of their life or what, what they want you to see as their, their best parts. And so you compare yourself to that. But, and, and then you try to, to make yourself like this other person or try, try, to, try to change, maybe you try to change who you are and that, in my opinion, is, is going to be the most boring thing to watch, you trying to be someone else yeah. when you are the most interesting version of yourself. You are the person that people wanna see because they've never seen you before and no one can do what you do. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's such a good point. Yeah, definitely. You can clap because it's <laughs> very well said. You can clap for me. It's fine. <laughs> Actors like clapping. Um, it, it's, a, it's a good point, though. What you see on social media is not reflective of someone's life. There was just, I read a really interesting thing about this influencer who did a story about her going to Bali and she was actually at Ikea. And she did all these pictures. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she did all these pictures and everybody's like, oh, it looks amazing. So that's tropical paradise. And she's like, just kidding, I was at Ikea. So <laughs> you really can't believe anything you see anymore, yeah. sadly. Um, <laughs> if you had to wrap up what Star Trek means to you at this moment in your life, you know, six episodes in that have aired after one season, what would, what would it be? I mean, at the moment, Star Trek's my life. I mean, growing up, it was entertainment. Um, I don't think I was old enough, though, to kind of fully absorb the message that it was delivering, you know? Um, it wasn't, and, it re and I can honest to God say this, it wasn't until the J.J. Abrams uh, movies that I started being like, okay, I need to re-watch this show because the movies are okay, but they're not as good as the TOS movies. Um, <laughs> so, I was wondering where you were going with that. <laughs> yeah, more applause. Um, so I'd say, yeah, before it was entertainment, and now it's just, it's my life. And I couldn't choose a better life, I, I think, than Star Trek. Yeah, I'd have to say, uh, if I were to sum it up, it, it would be just the beginning. It feels like... Ooh, the, ominous. Yeah, well, no, but just uh, there, I think we are just scraping the surface of what Star Trek means to us. I mean, it already means so much. Um, in, in the fact that, hey, this is like one of my first big jobs and, and this, is, this has given me so, so many amazing experiences, but there's only just endless amounts more to come of, of, of meeting people who love the show and of, of getting to explore new sides of our own characters, new sides of Star Trek itself. And so, yeah, it just feels like it's just the beginning. I love that. Well, it is the beginning of your Star Trek journey. It is the end of this panel, though. I'm no. sorry to say. <laughs> Evan and Isa, you guys have been amazing. Did you guys enjoy your time? You guys are here all weekend, right? Yeah. Okay, so make sure you go say hi downstairs. Tell them your Picard story and your love of Trek. And thank you guys so much. One more big round of applause for Evan and Isa. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is Aaron Ashmore, and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe like, like now. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.